if you're anything like me, then you're definitely a little frustrated because you don't like the little extra stuff on top of you. You're working really freaking hard and it's still not working. There's still something missing and it. it's just not working. You've died in hundreds of times. You're really good at it, but then you will constantly find yourself needing to do it again and again and again. And all of these influence that you see, all these fitness motivation videos that you see, you just want to look like that. <laughs> Guys, I get it. I remember if you look back at my videos, you'll see that I literally said I will never have a body like this. And here we are years later and I do, but it's because I stopped making these three mistakes. Number one, a little too extreme, kind of in a lot of different areas, right? We are so good at being really good for a short period of time. <laughs> for a very short period of time, right? So a lot of the times people use dieting as like an on and off switch. You're either dieting or you're not dieting. You're either doing it or you're not doing it. You're either working really hard or you're not working at all. <laughs> Guys, I understand. I get it. And once we start, once we reinstall new hardware for it to be a dimmer switch instead of a light switch, so instead of an on and off, we kind of like turn it up or we turn it down, but the light should never go off. So once we kind of correct that extremist mindset where you have to go in, you have to be 100%, and you really know and understand how you can operate from like 60 to 85 the majority of the time, and then kind of dial it up to that like 90-ish, 95, when you really want to see better results or more defined results. But learning how to kind of live in a space rather than this on and off or you know, here or there, it's going to be a really big game changer. So stop being so extreme. It's work. You're working way too hard. I know you do have to work hard. It is hard work. So don't take me wrong, but let's think of it this way. You can lift a car. If I say go lift that car, everybody's like, Ooh, I'm going to show that I'm the strongest. We're going to work the hardest we possibly can. And they go and they get underneath it and they raise it up and they're like, Grin and grin. And I'm like, yeah, you know, you're able to do it for like a millisecond, maybe. <laughs> I know you're probably over there like, what? I can't lift a freaking car. But I know you're strong enough to do really cool things and really amazing things. And I know you're really good at working really, really hard. Guys, I get it. I am too. But what if instead of going and gritting and lifting the car up with our bare, our bare grit, what if we used a jack? and learned how to take our tire off and learned how to screw it back in and learned how to put the car up and put the car down with a jack. The same thing gets accomplished without all of that expenditure. Isn't that crazy? Like, okay, some jacks I know, like mine in my car used to be like this, like you did have to kind of hand twisted but now it's like this guy had one across the street and you like press the button and it was like Rrr. right so all we need to do is get the proper equipment have the proper approach and we can do the same things with a lot less effort so number one is being too extreme having an on and off switch rather than a dimmer switch number two only having a weight loss goal that your goal is to lose weight i'm sorry You might have reached that goal before, but once you have that goal, you shouldn't really have it again, right? It'd be great if we only had that goal once. And the truth is that we really need to refocus, rephrase, and restructure the goal as a whole. And it's, it's just very singularly focused. There's so many other things that can happen inside of the body besides weight dropping. I'm pretty sure you've heard this a couple times, but it is really about the fat content going down. I weigh more than I ever have at like a, a very natural state. However, I look the best I've ever looked. <laughs> and I like the way that I look and I like the way that my clothes fit. So I want you to just imagine that. I want you to imagine the shape. Think of the shape that you want. Do you really want to just be skinny? Because you can. Like I said, you've probably done it a million times and you're really good at it. You're really good at losing weight. But at the end of the day, you keep get, gaining a lot of fat back after you turn that dieting off. 
because you didn't change the composition of your body and you focused solely on losing weight, in which in the process, you probably did a lot of behaviors that made you lose muscle as well, which sucks because muscle makes you a metabolic machine. And so if we can actually give you the goal of becoming stronger, becoming more consistent over a longer period of time, fueling your body with nutrition and adding things in versus getting rid of weight, we're gonna be a lot more success successful over a longer period of time. Girl, and you're gonna feel like a rock star. So take a second to really think about a few other things besides weight loss that you believe that you'd benefit from. I wanna be more hydrated of a person. I wanna create more energy as a person. What do you want to add to who you are and how you feel versus taking away from your body? It's okay if you have a fat loss goal. Give it a percentage. Look at a few different body fat percentages online and kind of see like, ooh, I really enjoy like a 20% because to be honest, I was at 18% and while I looked really cool and muscular, trying to maintain that was kind of like, mm, not a big fan. I really enjoy around like 21% because it's like I look feminine, but then when I move, like I have muscles, like, you know, I go to reach for something and it's like, ooh, <laughs> right? So that is a cool goal for me to look feminine, but then also be able to look muscular when I'm working out and things of that nature. So think about that, write down a couple goals and start working towards those rather than just weight loss. All right. So number three is a little rough. It is a little rough because it's about your beliefs. Unfortunately, a lot of the time, the beliefs that we have aren't necessarily true. Um, if you don't know, I was a marketing major and I graduated with a marketing degree and marketing 101, if you listen to anybody, is create a problem or solve a problem, find the problem, highlight the problem. Problem, problem, problem. <laughs> No wonder we so stressed, right? Constantly, we're not just being marketed to it. It's like, look at this awesome thing. It's like, no, you have this problem and we need to fix it. So a lot of the times we are generating more problems than we actually have. And so our belief systems, you know, people want to make programs and all of these things and sell us these programs. So a lot of our beliefs are based off of, oh, this is going to work. Oh, that's going to work because it worked for so-and-so or this person, I trust this person, so it's going to work and... I need to do X, Y, Z in order to lose weight because that's all I've done in the past and it worked in the past, right? Remember, you're a rock star at losing weight. I have no doubt about it, right? But if you're here again, trying to figure out how to lose weight and what you're doing wrong because you're back in the same position, then let's check those beliefs. Let's really figure out like, do you need to do those things to lose weight? Do you even want to lose weight in the first place? What do you believe about losing weight that causes you to have action. Because here's the deal. We have our beliefs, our beliefs drive everything. We have our belief system and then we have a stimulus. And once that stimulus interacts with our, interacts with our belief system, then we have an action or an emotion or something comes out of us. And so if we go back and we can restructure what the actual belief system is, then we can change what our response is and it'll propel us into completely different actions. So for instance, here's a good example for me and one that I'm currently working on is it's so easy to not eat a meal, right? You're not necessarily hungry. It's time to eat. You have to cook or you have to go heat that thing up and you're just kind of like, mm, I don't feel like it. <laughs> yeah, there's some times definitely where I'm like, oh, I could just skip a meal and then I'll be in a caloric deficit and then right? That belief system is a very, very deep one for me where if I'm trying to lose weight, I need to eat like a bird. And I know this is one that a lot of us have and I'm still fighting it and I've been fighting it for a couple of years, but I know if I bring that thought to my attention, I can go in and restructure the belief system. We can go in and restructure the belief system and what the brain automatically thinks. So just to let you know, I did get up and I did go and eat that meal. And I'm so happy that I did because I was still really hungry for dinner. It was my third of four, I ate four meals a day. It was my third of my fourth meal of the day and I was going to skip it and didn't, wouldn't have been for another four hours after that when I was supposed to eat. So it would have been like eight hours of not eating. I would have been ravenous and then it would cause me to be tired, angry, cranky. And it also would have affected my training for the rest of the week. So these are butterfly effects as well. And so when it comes to building new beliefs, we have to make sure that we're taking into account 
all of the butterfly effects of our actions, not just the single-handedly in the moment temporal action, right? The butterfly effects of those actions. So I ate that meal because I didn't want my training to be shitty the next day, right? I wanted to feel really good when I woke up. I wanted to feel fueled. And that's one of my goals besides weight loss going back to um, the previous points. All right. So let's work on those belief systems. Make sure you subscribe. So I'm going to keep releasing videos like this that help you redesign your belief systems and redesign the way that you're thinking about weight loss or fitness or anything in this health fitness realm. So let's rewind and really think about these three biggest mistakes that we've made through this time so that we can propel ourselves forward faster. Number one is it your goals are too extreme or your actions are too extreme towards this goal. Our actions go from zero to a hundred and we're really good at it, but we need to restructure that. Number two, it's only a weight loss goal. Your goal is based off of getting rid of something rather than adding betterment to it. And then number three, our belief systems are a little out of whack and we need to restructure those as well after we restructure what our actual goal is. So be sure to like and subscribe. If you like this video and it really did help you, think of a friend or two that can also benefit from this. It really does benefit us to do this with somebody and to go along this journey and be able to just check in with somebody. Somebody's on the same vibe, the same wavelength, you know what I mean? And so think about, I know you already thought about a couple people. So make sure to send them this link and come along for the journey. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a thing. I'm so excited to be sharing these things with you after a couple of years of really diving into it, changing my life myself and changing all of my clients' lives. Until next time, peace out.